All right. Uh, so you've seen a lot of eight-year-olds develop full-stack web applications or build 3D games using cursor and AI tools. And this has probably made a lot of us wonder that probably programmers are obsolete and no one needs programmers in this world now. Anyone can code now. Um, I think this is all an extreme take. Uh, the applications that I've seen being developed are very basic, which does mean that you can develop basic applications using cursor and other AI tools without knowing any uh, without knowing any programming, which is great. But whenever you try to develop anything complex, fairly complex, or anything that has real world use cases, then you'll understand that AI struggles a lot. So you have to intervene yourself a lot. You have to use your developer mind a lot and probably even provide the right prompts for AI to help you, right? So all of these does require developer knowledge and you to be a developer to actually fix the problems. Uh, now, even though that is the case, AI has significantly improved the speed of my development. So instead of sourcing answers on Stack Overflow or Google, now I can simply ask Claude or ChatGPT, mostly Claude, about what's going on in this program, why am I facing a problem, Is what is the what's the bug about. And the LLM 90% of the time does help me out. Uh, it gives pretty accurate answers, helps me out with what I could have found in 10 minutes of research, it gives me in under 30 seconds. So all of these things add up and really increase the productivity of whenever I'm trying to develop an app. Um, and this has helped me in creating sort of a power stack that I use to create applications now. I, I run two applications now, two SaaS products. And this is exactly the method and the stack that I use to develop these applications now. So let's see how I do it. Right, so this is the three-step process or the power stack that I was talking about. So step one is to wireframe, sketch, and spend the initial days in deep thinking, ruminating over the problem statement you're trying to solve. Uh, I draw a few sketches like this one. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. But yeah, I draw sketches and uh, write notes about what I want the problem to solve. And yeah, this is one of the problem statements that I was trying to solve. And once I've done that, I... So during that process, what I try, what I love to do is that I like to go to Claude and brainstorm with Claude about what's going on. How can I make this application better? How can I make it efficient? What technologies should I use? Do I need a long running server? Um, and what should be the structure of my application? All of this. And I also use V0 for speeding up my UI development. That is... All the UI development that I do, a lot of it, I take inspiration from V0 or Tailwind UI. So a few friends, so a friend of mine bought Tailwind UI and now he has shared it with all of us. So I use Tailwind UI to just pick up ready-made components. And sometimes when I need custom components, I go to V0 and I give it prompts and it helps me in making the right sort of... Uh, UI that I want based on the screenshot that I provide or the sketch that I made, I, the photo of the sketch that I provide, it helps me with that. So once I'm done with the wireframing and the sketching stage, then I move on to the scaffolding, which is like half a day. So currently I'm using Turbo Repo in every project that I build because you never know if you need more than one application inside your project, right? So that's why you just go with Turbo Repo and I use T3 app to scaffold my next year's project inside a Turbo Repo. And this is the step three, where I actually build the product. And this is where I spend most of the time. And this is what I want to talk about in this video. Um, I use Cursor heavily now. Uh, Cursor is this really amazing AI editor that helps you in multi-line edits or even multi-file multi edits. And it helps you in create different files, organize your files and everything. So... I use cursor for that. Uh, now, a very important thing to note over here is that I am the CEO, I am the CTO, I am the founder of the product. And I use cursor only and only as the founding engineer or probably as the intern, the very smart intern in my company. So I don't give control to cursor or any LLM 100%. I am the one who's in charge whenever I'm building applications and I need to guide cursor in the right way 
uh and then course can really help me so there are a few guidelines which i follow and uh yeah so let's actually see how this works in action because that's when we'll understand the best right so the problem statement for this video for example is that i want to build a payment gateway so i'll just go to claude and this is the problem statement that i've thought about for very long and i want to solve it so how will i solve it so i'll start with the question of what should be the system design of a payment gateway because that is the most important part of such an application right in my opinion um so i'll be like how can i now now i because i'm a developer i know what system design means and how powerful it is and why i need to start with that instead of anything else so that's what i'll be prompting claude and it, it can help me and i spelled payment wrong <laughs> but probably it knows i'm talking about this yeah so i need a client interface i need load balancers application servers and what not so definitely a mono repo <laughs> uh, and yeah it give me a beautiful flow chart of what needs to go around uh yeah so this is a very very complex uh project and you can play around with claude ask it get, get very deep into payment gateways and for example if you if you don't know what a caching layer is you can like just copy it and be like what is a caching layer why do i need it and then claude will help you in why you need a caching layer what it is and just learn about it and get started with it and i mean probably this requires more than 2 to 3 days of research because it is such a complex problem statement but yeah mostly uh you'll get a very good understanding by just brainstorming with cloud or chat gpt uh and yeah it'll they'll, they'll help you in your research a lot so next up is scaffolding which i'm not going to cover in this video you can there are tons of tutorials for that uh now let's move on to the ui side what do i do in the ui in the ui i just probably give it a few screenshots like hey i really like this and i want this sort of to be my landing page um probably i really like stripes as well so i'll give it stripes landing page and i'll be like uh please help me generate a landing page for using for a payment gateway for a premium looking payment gateway and yeah let's see what it gives us now uh yes v0 is also a paid tool you can upgrade to get more usage uh should you be upgrading for all the tools that i'm going to uh, mention in this video uh, we'll discuss that pay flow wow just look at this just look at this wow <laughs> i didn't even have to do anything and uh, it gave me such a beautiful looking landing page and the best part of this is that all of this is written in shard cn and using shard cn and tailwind which is exactly the design system and design framework that i use in all my applications uh because it is developed by the same people so so yeah beautiful just beautiful right uh you can just simply copy paste this and you're pretty much cold enough after that now coming to the most important part that is actually building the project and adding new features apart from ui uh, now over here again i like to use cloud a lot because again it's it's a very good brainstorming partner and someone who can you can bounce ideas off and validate them in the sense wow uh, get technical understanding of the ideas or the features that you're, that you're trying to develop so I again use cloud a lot in this stage as well but i also use cursor which is the really powerful ai editor which i use nowadays uh yeah it is paid and again we'll be discussing in the end whether you should be actually upgrading to cursor or cloud and probably other v0 and yeah other tools that we are discussing in this video but now let's focus on how we can actually supercharge cursor and why do we need cursor so Cursor is actually this very amazing editor where you can just enter your composer mode or yeah you can just enter your composer mode and go bollocks over here it can help you in creating new files debugging your code and what not so for example i did not know what the script tag does i mean i knew it but for, for instance let's let's think that i do not know what the script tag does inside next js and i asked it what is script tag doing over here what does it even mean 
So then it is, it told me that it is helping me in importing the razor pay checkout script and why I need it, what's going on, why is it in the layout file? And yeah, so pretty good in helping you understand the code. Now, an other feature or an other hack to supercharge cursor is to actually add in cursor rules in every project yours. Now, because I use basically the same tech stack in every project that I build, I just have it stored over here in the default section, but you can also create a dot cursor rules file over here inside the root of your project where you have the cursor rule itself. Uh, now, how do you find these cursor rules? I mean, do you type it yourself? Do you help take, take up help of some LLM? Um, so there's this amazing website called cursor directory where you can find tons and tons of pre-made cursor rules for you to just copy paste. Um, so for example, if you are for, for like me, if you're building a Next.js project, just you choose Next.js or probably shard C and tailwind and you just copy the whole rules of, uh, yeah, the rules of whatever it is helping. So I, for example, I'm using this one right here. Uh, yeah, and you can do that. Or what you can do is, for example, if you're using multiple technologies in your, inside your project and you mix and match, what you can do is you can go to Claude <laughs> again and paste this over here and uh, just tell it, can you make me a cursor rule or a file similar to this where I'm also using Python and Rust in a mono repo? So that'll, that'll be like super complex, right? And probably it can help you in a mono repo. So the problem that I'm giving it over here is I pasted the cursor directly, directory of a Next.js project using TypeScript and shard CN and whatnot. And over here I've just given it, can you create a file for me where I'm using Rust as well for my backend. And all of this is in a mono repo. Let, let's see what it gives us. All right, I think it got a little confused. Yeah, and now it's giving me what I actually want. Uh, so, yeah, nice. And you can probably go ahead and copy this and paste it inside my cursor.rules file for the specific project. Or if I'm using the same text tag again for every project, I can go to the cursor settings and just paste it over here, which will help cursor in get better context on what I'm trying to do. Now, another very awesome feature inside cursor is that you can provide it links to the docs that you're actually using inside your project. So for example, I use TRPC a lot. I'll just go ahead and copy TRPC docs and inside the composer, I can simply type in, uh, let's open the composer. Inside composer, I can go ahead and be like, add the rate docs and give it a new doc. For example, this TRPC docs, TRPC. So, Anytime I refer to the name at the rate TRPC, it will help me with, it will fetch the docs and actually help me with that. So I can go ahead and ask it, what does hydrate client do? And it'll help me in understanding what does hydrate client do inside TRPC and it'll give me the links to where it is. And it's pretty amazing. So it, it's, it's helping me understand what dehydration is, what hydration is. Uh, yeah, this is one of the amazing features that I really like about the, uh, the cursor, cursor editor. And again, we've already spoken about the composer and com command I and command K feature. So yeah, these three features really supercharge your development and it reduces the back and forth that you need to do inside development. You don't need, you don't, you don't need to open Google or stack overflow every time you're facing a bug. You can do it directly inside your, uh, directly inside your editor, which has all the context it needs inside your application. So it just increases the capability of the model that you're using because it has more context. Yeah. And anytime, and then another tip that I want to give you for using cursor is that because I'm building such a, such a complex application draw, which has a lot of files and this is not a mono repo yet. I'm going to convert it soon, but in a mono repo, I have multiple projects also inside. So sometimes Claude or sometimes a uh, cursor does get stuck. So in those times, what I like to do is that I like to go to Claude, even though uh, it is using the same model, even though Claude is inside cursor and using the same thing. I mean, it's using the API of Claude. It still gets stuck. And I find that using Claude directly helps me resolve that issue. If it doesn't, then I like to shift to chat GPT 
and provide it like yeah, I've, I've, you, as you can see, I have I play around a lot with Chat GPT as well because I haven't bought Claude uh Claude's premium subscription, so I like to play around with both of them, and they both actually surprisingly give me very very good results. It's very very rare for me now to go to uh Google and search for the solution. I I do have to do that sometimes when when I'm reading like when I'm facing a very complex problem. I need to still go to Google, read a few blogs, read the actual documentation, go very deep into the problem that I'm trying to solve. But that's become very rare. I don't. I rely very heavily on the LLMs to help me out and speed in speed in the process. So now this is the exact stack that I use to build all my SaaS products now, and this helps me in developing them very very rapidly. It's like blazing fast at at the speed at which I'm developing applications now. So that's pretty good. uh the key take the key take away that i want you to take from this video is to have a framework of yourself because this is the framework that works for me right uh using p3 next js express cursor claude v0 tailwind all of this is not something that i want to force upon you all of this is my tech stack that i use and it's very comfortable and very powerful to me doesn't mean it has to be powerful to you so i want you to spend time figuring out what works for you what tech stack are you comfortable in what helps you build projects very fast because if you can repeat this process of building very fast and iterating over projects very fast then you probably won't be successful in the first try not in the third try not in the 10th try but eventually you will succeed because you have developed a framework for developing applications very fast and yeah that should really help you Now another important point is should you be investing in cursor and v0 cloud um so if you're a student <laughs> uh just create new email ids every time and use cursor till you actually get an internship and then i would highly highly recommend that you buy cursor at least right now because cursor is the hottest editor right now which can help you a lot so definitely recommend to buy cursor Now about V0 and Claude you can probably get away with uh, not buying subscriptions but keep in mind that you'll have to use them very sparingly and very mindfully so you can't just randomly uh, ask questions to Claude you have to be very mindful of the questions you're asking Claude and that's what I do I club two three questions together and then I ask Claude because I'm not uh, too keen on buying the pro subscription for it and similarly for V0 uh because I like a friend of mine has bought Tailwind UI and I like getting ready made components and I just lift it from them. So yeah, that that's a, that's another alternative which uh, if you have like three four builder friends or if you can pool money and buy a buy a component library which can help you out, we can help you guys out. Um uh, yeah, that's about it in this video. Um another thing that I would like to tell you about is that you should be very very aware about the developments in ai happening around you because think of all of these as tools tools inside your arsenal that you will be using in developing applications so think of the way that you use vs code now and not notepad to develop applications right if you're developing uh, applications in notepad you know your speed will be very very slow right similarly if you step away from vs code to cursor your speed will again increase so don't think of this as cheating or using ai to develop applications think of them as important and powerful tools which you can use to develop applications increase your speed and i'm pretty sure that in the future these will be looked on as tools rather than as it's something known as cheating or probably being used for the wrong purposes or making programmers obsolete these are tools which will make you very very powerful and capable as a developer and that's where i think ai shines it helps you in not doing the tedious task anymore you don't have to copy paste code anymore you don't have to do the repeatable tedious stuff anymore you can get the help of ai for example if you want to generate something repeatable for example a json which has a lot of names and i email ids you can use ai for that it'll help you out or if you want to research some fetching model or you can use ai for that so yeah use them as valuable assets for enhancing your capabilities and they will help you out and that's all that's been all for this video see you